What's going on, guys? Lou Balls. Lou Balls. Lou Balls. Uh, just got out of work and figured I'd start working on some video. What do you guys usually want to do when you get out of work? Nice long day. All right, you're either cracking open a beer or you're headed to the gentleman's club. Is that right? <laughs> Enjoy a little bit of relaxation. I can't even say that with a straight face. Caught me on break, it's kind of noisy out here. But uh, I was thinking, what could I do after work? Let's go relax. Might go do something a little different. Maybe gentlemen's club. <laughs> I don't know how many of you out there got a personal exotic dancer. We're gonna go visit one. I know some of you guys are gonna kick out of it. Yo, why is it that the last few videos, my hair's always crazy and nobody says anything? It's okay to say some crazy stuff, guys. Blue balls. Hopefully you saw the disclaimer in the beginning of the video. Trust me, it's not what you think, but all in the name of creativity, right? Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go home, take a shower, get ready to go, and uh, see you then. All right, fresh out the shower, getting ready. I'm not sure which one. Ah, we'll figure it out. I got my shirt picked out. All right, I'm all dressed up, getting ready to go. Where the hell do you think you're going? <laughs> Nowhere, baby. All right, and this beautiful girl right here is the main attraction. All right, so obviously that was a joke, but um, this video is not going to disappoint either way. Um, this one's about a very special girl I have in the collection and a little bit of the story behind her. So when I first um, when I first met her, she was a tiny little baby. Um, I got her from the same place where I got Zaju and Ace from. But the difference is, um, this was the one that I was going to get aside from Zaju. I was either going to get both or one or the other, but either way, um, it turned out the way it did. And she ended up in my care anyway. When I first met her, she was really sweet. She was tiny little thing and um, she had just got her so when it came time to pick up Zazu they were telling me about how she had become obviously a little bit more aggressive over time or um, I wouldn't say aggressive I would say more she had more of a feeding response because what it seemed like was that she wasn't uh, handling as much as she should, especially if you're going to be drop feeding um, as a pet. Uh, she was probably feeding her like once a month. Um, I don't know what the situation was. This is just hearsay. But what I do know is that she was drop feeding her. She was drop feeding all of her animals and she wasn't handling them on a regular basis. Um, work situation and just life takes over and you just can't, she just didn't have time. So, um, since I wasn't working with them as much, Zazu and her became a little bit more feisty. <clears throat> so, I went over there to go pick up Zazu, and um, I see there's kind of a mess, you know? I don't know how long the mess has been sitting there, so I just figured, hey, do um, you want me to help out? Figured since I'm going to pick, be picking up Zazu, she's giving me Zazu, I may as well help clean up, you know, the, the, the enclosures a little bit. Now she was in a split tank, it was a, a three-way tank, 
really, really cool. I ended up getting it um, as a trade off for a regular 10 gallon tank. Um, but I'll show you that in a little bit. I have uh, two other animals in it right now. So when I went to reach in, she told me, she was like, hey, look, she snaps at anything that comes in a tank. I really don't handle her as much, but um, just be careful. So I went to reach in to grab her out so I could start cleaning or help her so she can clean in there. And as soon as I put my hand in there, boom, she got me. Without hesitation, she didn't even think about it. I didn't see her coil up, nothing. It was a lightning surprise. So I figured, so she was already on, on me. I pulled her out, grabbed her, and and got a control of her. Once I got control of her, she let me go. It wasn't a problem. It was just a feeding response. Anything that came into the tank because she wasn't regularly handling them is obviously food to her. So um, in her brain, hey, food's coming. Let's, let's get ready. Um, so either way, I grabbed her out, I cleaned up a little bit. I put her back, put a Band-Aid on because she, she got me pretty good. Um, and and I moved on, I grabbed Zazu and I left. Um, now, a couple months later, she brings her and Ace over. And she brings her over first because um, this is just what she was able to grab from the situation. She was just able to get a few things. She grabbed her and she brought her in a little box. Um, Ace came in a 10 gallon tank, she came in a little box, so I was like, I sent I sent my wife out to go get a tub, a nice big side tub, because I didn't realize how big she was and how much space she needed, but I figured, um, I'm, I'm going to be getting more anyway, I could use a tub. So I sent her to get a tub, and we put her in a tub, she got her own enclosure, got her own water bowl, everything set up, and she's done great ever since, you know, nice a little time away from the other two that were in the same, you know, just a feeling. And I went in and I dealt with, you know, I had to clean paper towels on a regular basis. So her seeing me moving back and forth besides just feeding um, gave her a better understanding that not everything is food. Um, plus, I was feeding her every week, whether it be a mouse or anything. Now, she was a live only feeder. She wouldn't touch anything else. And I slowly graduated her onto frozen thawed. Now at first she was a little hesitant, but um, she missed one, the first one that I gave her. I gave her something live, gave her something else live, and I brought it back to the frozen. And then I started mixing it up, something live, something from, something pre-killed, something frozen, something just to get her understanding that there could be multiple different types of food. Just in case something's not available, um, I got a hold of ASF. I wanted her to know what that was, but I mix it up for all of them actually, just to make sure that um, they have a good variety in diet. In the wild, not every, not every single time is there gonna be a perfect little white mouse coming into the, uh, wherever they are so they can ambush. It's not always gonna be a perfect little rat. It's not always gonna be an ASF. Something is going to show up, they're going to eat, and they're going to coil back up and, and go back to sleep for a couple of days. But that's how I try to do it. I've, I mean, I've learned a lot from everybody's videos, whether it be Gavin from Balls to You or Brian Barcheck or whatever. Um, but yeah, um, and that's that's how I got her. Now, she's she's been great ever since. She hasn't you know, hissed since the first time I got her because being inside the box and transferring her over, she didn't like it, obviously. She's never snapped at me ever since um, the incident when I went to go pick up Zazu. And she's just an all around beautiful addition. Uh, I like to call her as a joke, my exotic dancer. So that's kind of where the whole idea for the video came from. But yeah, every time like when I go clean her up or she knows it's a feeding day, I'll see her out in her enclosure you know, throughout the day or right before, right before feeding, and she'll she'll be doing her little her little uh, her little ballerina thing, you know, and then just you know being an exotic pet. I just see it's a cute little nickname, my exotic dancer. She's gorgeous. Um, I know a lot of people love these types, um, and I don't know, it's just an all-around great addition to my ball python collection. And with that being said. 
this is the last video um, when it comes to the ball pythons or the animals that I got from where I got them from. They're my original start. You know, I got Zazu and then I got Ace and her. And, and that's really what got me going here because it just seemed like with situation and life and trying to catch up, it didn't seem like I was going to be able to get anything from my own for a while. So this was a really cool start. Got me a little bit of experience of owning and keeping my own reptiles um, instead of going out and helping other people with theirs. But um, it was a, it was an experience and I love it. I wouldn't change a thing. From what I'm seeing, she's also in shed. And that's just my luck. It just seems like they're all falling into their uh, their normal habits their normal routine but if you can see she is all muddied up now this this is autumn a hundred points for whoever can guess what she is And this, for anybody that hasn't guessed yet, she is obviously a spider jean. And you'll be able to see the corkscrew in a second. There it is. We call her, well I call her my exotic dancer over here. Because every few days when she poops or pees or get excited, she's, uh, I look in the tub on the rack and she's over there dancing up a storm and doing all her craziness see her now don't get it twisted like she is she is a great feeder when I got her she was only eating live you know not to mention the fact that she was only about 150 grams but um, she was only eating live and they were giving her mice um, and I got her, as reluctant as she was at first, I got her feeding frozen thawed, ASFs, rats, anything I throw at her. As long as it's warm enough for her to keep that uh, heat signature, she's at it. She's taking it. But she is a killer bee fire or a fire killer bee. And that is uh, fire, of course, a super pastel, and a spider gene. Everybody loves a spider gene, except for the haters, right? But she is a wonderful, wonderful addition. She's beautiful. Um, normally, she's not as muddied up. She's a lot lighter. Um, this, if you can see, the whiteness comes up from the belly really nicely and it has some outlining over the, over the patterning, like a yellowish color. Let me see if it, there we go. And there's a little bit of yellowing up top, but it's more of a, like a really lighter gray color, but it's usually a lot more white on here. Um, her patterning actually has some blushing inside of it in most parts from the super pastel and her head pattern freaking gorgeous look at this thing now when I first got her um, she was she was an attitude she was definitely a another big old problem but she settled in very nicely. I got her in her own tub instead of a glass tank. And she eats great. I was feeding her every week. She was eating ASF um, or weanling rats. Um, and recently I'm starting to get her to eat frozen thawed on a regular basis. Um, she hasn't hissed at me. 
since I got her. Um, when I first got her, she wasn't really in a mood for anything. And she never snapped at me after the first time. Um, but she has settled in nicely. Whereas before she had a super attitude, she didn't like being handled. Um, but beautiful, beautiful thing. She's gained a lot of weight. She does uh, take her time and she has missed a few feedings. She's not a problem feeder. She's just not a super consistent one. And sometimes it's because either she's in shed and she might not want to eat or um, when I was transitioning her over to frozen thawed, she just wasn't taking the frozen thawed every single time. So um, I just wait, give her a week for her to get hungry and then boom, she took it. And so um, but she is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful girl. You know, a super pastel. Um, I have a pastel so I can make some super pastels as well. I can probably recreate her. Spider Jean is amazing with anything, so I can mix her up with a few of my boys and make some beautiful things. But yeah, this is Autumn. It's pretty, pretty girl. She's gotten so big, and it's just good to see her acting the way she is you know I, at first I was so afraid to hold her but um, after handling her a few times she gave me no problems whatsoever and yeah, a beautiful addition man I can make bumblebees with her and now I'm kinda really not sure whether I should breed her just because of um, how much I can see the wobble in her, but it doesn't hinder her, and I think I wanna try at least once um, to get her breeding, just to get um, the spider gene out of her, because I prefer to start off a single gene, at least until I know my identifications and um, I just want to be able to experience every um, every gene singly by itself that I can as a baby I want to be able to identify I don't want to give anybody if I do start selling them I don't want to give anybody a snake or a baby that I cannot identify or that I don't know what it is I, mean, I don't want to give you like somebody says you know this could be a possible yellow belly a possible pastel I want to know exactly what's in my snakes and so if that means keeping my breedings to um, a two to three gene minimum, uh, maximum, then I'll do that. There's no reason for me to be trying to make a eight gene animal when I can't even identify half of what I have. So what I'm saying is I'm not knocking anybody that's doing that. Experienced breeders, you do what you gotta do because you know what you're doing. But because I'm not an experienced breeder, I would like to gain that experience starting at base level. Base genes is what I went in for um, just so I can get exactly that. My experience going and then a few years in once I know what I'm doing maybe I'll start doing three to four gene animals but one step at a time. Right now I'm just enjoying the collection that I have and trying to add more beauty to it. And that is Autumn. It's a beautiful girl. She is in shed, so I will be doing an update on her in my next video once she is out of shed. But yeah, the female fire killer bee. She's just about 350 grams right now, give or take. Um, and I will be weighing her tomorrow, which is probably when this video is coming out if I get all the good footage that I need. Um, just so I can get a good empty weight on her before she feeds. Uh, if she feeds, because she is in shed. But yeah, this is my autumn. This is my exotic dancer here. 
and beautiful little ballerina. All right, girly. There you go. Yeah, these are her numbers and her information. I got her on May 29th as well, like I said, um, with the other two, uh, Ace and Zazu. Um, but yeah, these are this is her growth and transformation. First weight I got off of her was 188 grams, and then slowly she's been up and down depending on her feedings, but gotten her at a steady 374 grams last weigh-in, but I'll be doing another weigh-in tomorrow. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Um, that was my Exotic Dancer Autumn. Um, that's what the whole setup was for. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of an update as well as um, one more uh, snake, and I'm pretty sure I showed a preview of the Triple Tank and the animals that are in there, but I'll explain. Um, like I said, this is gonna be the last video um, of the snakes that I got from her. From now on, um, it's going to be explaining some of the um, recent additions, more recent additions that I've gotten after, um, and literally is pretty much like right after. But uh, we'll do more video for that later. But like I said, um, thank you very much for watching. Um, please um, comment any comments, whatever you got. Um, uh, constructive criticism as well, uh, well accepted here. I'm still learning, trying to have fun with this stuff. And hopefully this video came out good. But let me know in the comments. Uh, hit that like button. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. And um, see you guys soon in future videos. Holla. Holla. <laughs> All right, this is the triple tank I was talking about. As you can see, I already have two other animal setups, but I put something in the middle so they don't bother each other. Um, this is the third animal I got out of her, or the fourth, technically, because whatever. But that is Hayes, and she was, she told me she was a children's python, but Looking at her colors and the way she's growing, I'm thinking more she's a spotted python. But she is a cute little noodle. Say hello, Hayes kind of got like a purplish hue and some spots it's really 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 cool but she is the oldest from what I'm told even though she is the tiniest either way I got her nicely set up she was in a tiny little box but I figured it would be a nice trade-off as I gave I uh, gave her a 10 gallon tank and I figured since she wasn't using this properly I would do something cool with it and on the other side something for Ed from the genetic hunters I know he loves this stuff oh yeah Halloween time baby but yeah I figured I'd set it up really cool I think it looks good. Everybody's got their own name tags. This is Nori. And that's Hazy. All right, guys, this is just a little update on Ace. Uh, he's just fresh out of shed. Gave me a full shed, finally, for the first time. 
Um, like I said in the video, or his video, um, he was in a glass tank. Uh, it wasn't holding the humidity very well, but um, his shed like always came out in pieces. I would have to soak him and help him take it off. And since I put him in a tub on the rack, um, he's actually had his first full shed, eye caps, bottom jaw, tail, all one piece. It's wonderful. Um, but if you want, uh, let's get a close up in here so you can see his colors that aren't all muddied out. It looks awesome. Like I said, he usually hangs out around my neck with me. I've been cleaning tubs and stuff today, so uh, he was just chilling with me doing that. Um, I figured I'd do a little uh, update while I'm doing this video. Um, right before, right after his shed, um, and right before I put him in with his girlfriend. Let's see if we can get this breeding season started. Yeah.